Hey, Foundry Small Groups, this is Phil. Uh, special welcome, this is my first, my first sermon recap video, so go easy on me. Uh, but yeah, welcome to Small Groups, and just wanted to recap uh, this first week of the Good News series. So there's an interesting um, story as Luke shares his version of the Christmas story, because he doesn't just start in by talking about, he doesn't go straight to Christ, he foreshadows John the Baptist. And John's father, Zechariah, the high priest, has this encounter with an angel, with Gabriel. And there was two responses that Zechariah had, fear and doubt. And I thought it was very interesting that the angel is offering good news, or, or the Greek word that we talked about here on Sunday was euangelion, which literally means the gospel. It means to proclaim the good news. And so at Christmas, we always talk about like the glad tidings of joy, but I don't think we realize that the gospel is still the central theme of that. Now, what was interesting, though, to me is, is how Zachariah responded, right? Because there wasn't like this joy in the good news. There was doubt and there was fear. Fear first because it was an angel of God. And we tried to unpack when you stand in God's presence, when you're in that moment, when you're right up next to his holiness, of course we're afraid because we know there's this gap between us. But yet what do we sing every time at Christmas? We sing God and sinners reconciled and scripture doubles down that perfect love drives out fear. It casts it out. And so there's this tension in the story. Here's Zechariah and he's afraid of the angel. And again, it doesn't fit our imagery of angels anyway, right? The, uh, the winged cherubs, the fat babies with, with the harps and the wings. And we're like, who would ever be afraid of that? But yet he was. And the angels are always like, fear not. But there's that euangelion, that good news in this story of saying, don't be afraid because God has literally entered the scene. God is here to bridge that gap. So we don't actually have to be afraid. And yet it's fascinating to me that that's the first response is to stand in fear of God. And here's God saying, perfect love drives out fear. The other response that we notice from Zechariah is one of doubt. His first immediate reaction when the angel gives him the plan, he's skeptical. He's like, how could, how could God use me? How could God do this? And it's an interesting response to be like, here's the plan verbatim from the mouth of an angel and you still doubt it, right? But I think that's our natural response to doubt. I think we've all been brought up to not trust uh, anything in the spiritual realms. Like literally our, our whole model of education is built upon what we can touch, taste, see, measure, and observe. And we're taught to just push everything else to the side if we can't scientifically prove it. But where does faith come in? See, Zachariah had those doubts, and I think we've got those doubts that the supernatural is still happening, right? But if we are honest, I think the real tension is, is the supernatural still happening? Does God still use angels? Does God still show up? Is God still on the move? And I think the answer is yes, but but why is our tendency to not believe it'll happen here for us? Why is our tendency to doubt and to be skeptical of stories that involve angels, of stories that involve healing, of stories that have God's fingerprints all over them, right? See, we expect God to do something in the interior of our lives, but we don't literally expect God to still send an angel or to show up in the miraculous. And so again, there's more tension have you felt that before? Have you felt that tension of like, you would be embarrassed by the supernatural if God did show up? Because that's an interesting question, right? Like, I think we almost want to keep it at arm's length. We want, to, we want to not be that caricature of a Christian that's like, oh yeah, the angel showed up at my house, right? Like, and so we try and keep the miraculous at arm's length. And I feel like God is saying, oh, I wish I could just give you eyes and ears to hear what's going on behind the veil, what's going on in the supernatural realms. Because it's not just limited to the Christmas story, right? Take the miraculous out of the Christmas story and what do you have? It's this hollow emptiness. Just a random baby being born in some uh, peasant town, you know, like. But the fact is, I don't think God's done. And I wonder if we're open to that still. I wonder if Christmas and Advent is still miraculous the way he wanted it to be. But I think there's a lot of questioning that goes on as you start talking about the miraculous because we can't define it. We can't articulate it. Talk about an angel experience and see if you're skeptical, right? So it, it leaves us in a tough place, but it's a good place because once you start wrestling through it, you start realizing that 
God has so much he wants to show us. And, and I have no idea the how, the when, the why that he chooses to reveal himself. Maybe you've already had that type of experience. And that's an awesome thing to share. But uh, you certainly have to wrestle through the tension of it because we don't know what he's up to in the supernatural. But I know I want to be that type of believer that still says, yes, show up, blow my mind, do something amazing, do something incredible, just like that first advent. Have you ever told people about an experience you've had and in response they did not believe you? Question two. Would you describe yourself as skeptical? Have you ever witnessed something for yourself, but found that you yourself may still not believe it? Question four. Why do you think it is that Zechariah questioned the angel? Look at Gabriel's first words to Zechariah. Fear not, the Lord has heard your prayer. What does this show us about God? Question six, has God ever given you a message audibly through his word, through another person, or by a nudge by the Spirit? And if so, did you listen, believe, and obey it? That's all for me. I'm going to pass it over to Lindsay now. Peace. All right. Hi, Foundry Groups. I'm filling in for Eric today, and um, we're still continuing on with answering some of the questions that you guys um, sent in to Kristen. So today I'm going to talk to you guys um, about the loop. Um, there was a couple of questions that um, came in for that, so um, we're going to take this time um, to answer those. First, I want to back up um, a significant amount of time and give you guys some history on how the loop got to where um, it got to today. For those of you that were with us from Early, early on, um, we used to have um, chalkboard clips um, and they strung on a board um, back at the gym that kind of looked like the, the Good News banner right now and um, family names were on it. Dropped it in a bucket if you were in attendance and that was our way to know who was with us and um, who to connect with. After that, um, we got a little bigger and um, that didn't really scale too well, so we moved to clipboards. So on the clipboard listed, um, for those that remember gravity groups, it listed all of our gravity groups available and a connection card as well. So everybody received a clipboard um, when they walked in to sit, to sit down. As you can imagine, that clearly did not scale and was very labor intensive, so we did move to um, the loop. Um, so now that we are um, having the loop, a couple of um, things I want to tell you guys about why we have the loop um, and the information that is on it. First off, we want, um, we have the loop, and I know you guys, um, for those that look at it every week, a lot of that information is repetitive to you, but it is not repetitive to somebody that walks in for the first time and that is a visitor. So we want to make sure our visitors have all the information um, that they need um, in attending the foundry and here for the first time. So that's why you see a lot of repetition in that information. Um, this also, the loop also allows us to connect with our visitors. Um, so if they fill out a connection card, we are able to connect with them, gather their information. Um, we do um, have a process for that connection, um, so we want them to fill out that connection card. However, if you're a visitor, you're not going to be filling out the connection, ca connection card if nobody else is filling it out. So I strongly encourage and invite you guys um, to participate in filling out the connection cards. Um, first off, so that we know you guys are here, um, and then also it doesn't make um, the visitor um, feel awkward and think that they're doing this alone. If everybody's doing it, um, clearly not as awkward for them. So lead by example and um, please fill those out. Um, another reason we have the loop and more so the connection card is it offers a place for us to collect information for signups. So, during the service, if somebody realizes a stampede of kids leaving for a shakeout and realizes, oh my goodness, there's so many kids, I want to help with that, they're able to um, sign up right away. Walk past the nursery, see all the kids, it gives them an opportunity to sign up um, for any area of service um, or sign up for events as well. 
Um, now going over to kind of our whole communication strategy, um, we try to have all of our communications aligned via our website, the loop, social media, um, different people like information coming from different platforms, so we want to make sure our communications are aligned. Um, so if you guys like something in paper, you can catch it on the loop. If you want it at your fingertips for the website, that information should be there as well. Um, as always, if there is information that you guys don't know, um, please email, call us. Um, we, we answer info at foundrychurch.net or um, our phone will answer that as well, 748-2439. Definitely give us a call if you ever have any questions, um, if communications aren't clear or if you have questions on anything that you see. Um, one last thing, typically we've done staff introductions. Uh, we are not doing a staff introduction today, but I do want to let you guys know that we do have a staff directory available on our website right now. So um, that is new. We all got our pictures taken, class picture day. Um, so everybody that is on staff is uploaded to our website right now. So if you have any questions, want to get to know us, I invite you to visit um, foundrychurch.net. I think that covers everything, guys. Um, hope you're having a great day.